Hey guys, welcome back to another full self-driving video. I have 1242, it just came in and I'm gonna test it out. This is a tricky area. I've tested this before. You may have seen it in some of my previous videos. It's almost like a suicide left. It's kind of like Chuck's left turn, but a little bit different because it's at a different angle. It's very, very challenging for a human driver. I have a limited amount of time to test it here right now. I did drive it a little bit earlier and the way it moves within the lane is very different. It, it kind of hovers to the left, hovers to the right. It's not like it, it doesn't swerve, but it feels more like human, I guess. And it, it's, it's very, very subtle, very subtle, but it is noticeable and I like it. You know, I, I think it feels very, very natural. So let's see how this does. There's not too many people around. I'm gonna give it some variety here. If we, we go right now, it's gonna be clear. I wanna have it where there's some traffic. It is noon here on Monday morning, uh, the week of July 4th. So it's gonna be an interesting week here with traffic patterns. Hopefully I'll get a chance to get out on the highway and test this. I really hope, fingers crossed, that this goes wide, that all of you are getting this very, very quickly because the hands-free driving is a big change compared to previous versions, uh, 1236 namely. So here we have some cars coming. I'm gonna turn it on and let's see what it does. Instantly it takes off. With 1241, sometimes it would hesitate a little bit. We're coming up here now with this traffic. It is stopping well in advance here and coming forward, creeping, and waiting and going straight out. This is good, being assertive, and coming out to the creep zone in the middle. We do have some traffic on the right. We're lucky with the traffic on the left that there's not too much going on. And now as soon as we get over here, we need to get all the way over to the right. So this is gonna be really challenging for it to get all the way over. Look at this, making the move straight away. Now that blue flashing bar you just saw was telling me to pay attention. I'm paying a lot of attention, but I wasn't looking straight ahead. So whenever you get that flashing bar, instead of touching the wheel now, you can just look straight ahead. We need to get over once again. Here it goes, beautiful, look at that. Very smooth. Coming up here, we're gonna be turning right. One thing that I've noticed with 1241 compared to 1236 is that the speed it, it didn't seem to handle the speed as nicely. In other words, if you have the automatic set speed offset setting turned off, previously what you could do is use the right scroll wheel and adjust the speed manually, and it would typically go to the max speed setting. So we have arrived here. It's, it's just, it's trying to get to the pin. So it, we already came to the pin, and I'm not sure why it's going around here again but let's let it arrive here at this destination. Then we'll go ahead and turn it off. The one thing I love is when you're in a parking lot, you can turn it off. Like right now, let me just turn it off. I haven't touched the wheel at all. And now you can see I can select my spot on the screen. That's a really nice feature. So let's just say I wanna park here. You can hit the start button and you literally don't touch the wheel once for the entire drive. It's a completely different driving experience. Uh, so we, there's no need for us to really to park here, but what I wanna do is test that speed offset because you used to be able to have some control over your speed. You could bump it up a little bit with the scroll wheel, but with 1241, what I observed is that that no longer works. You have to step on the accelerator pedal to give it some extra speed. So fingers crossed, Tesla's fixed that. As usual, the release notes don't mention what was improved or what was fixed. So it's up to us to kind of figure that out. Hopefully we'll be able to notice something. So here I'm gonna say continue trip. To get it to continue trip, by the way, if anybody's new to this with the waypoints, you do have to park your car. So either you park your car, imitating like a robo taxi, like someone's getting out, they're leaving your vehicle, or you open up your door, and opening up your door does the same thing. It puts your car into park. It's very rare, uh, if not impossible, to have it show that continue trip button without you parking the car. So here we are. Uh, now I, I have the next destination dialed in already. We're going to a traffic light. As soon as we get onto Higgins Road, that's where I'm gonna do this test with the speed offset. 
I'm gonna see if I can just get away with not touching the wheel even once for this entire drive. Uh, so people that may not have this version in the autopilot menu, now you have a expanded full self driving visualization option. When you turn that on, the instant you enable self driving, it goes full screen. That is nice. And here's that automatic set speed offset I was talking about. I have that turned off so that I can set a max speed. And previously, like I mentioned, it would, it would actually go to that. It would try to go to that max speed. But lately it has not been doing that, which, which is not good because that means that it's, I mean, it's 50-50. I'm very curious to hear your opinions in the comments. I think a self-driving car should manage the speed correctly and automatically, however, it's not there yet. So in this kind of gray area where you have to intervene and, and, and help it out, because that's one of the biggest pain points I have is often it's going too slow. It's, it's very rarely going too fast in an area, but often it's going too slow. And it's supposed to match the traffic around you. And it, that's, it's not working because you'll have cars that are flying past you and it's like, come on, speed up. We're all set. I'm just gonna single tap down. Hopefully it's gonna take out take off out of this parking space. Previously, it would struggle with that. Okay, it still does struggle with getting out of parking spaces. But previously, even when you weren't in a parking space, if you were just on an open road or a parking lot, it would uh, hesitate to start going. Oh, look at this, it's starting to go. Wow, I didn't do anything. And it then finally decided to take off. That's great. Take a look at this. I've had this happen before where it's stuck in a parking space and someone drives behind me or comes up behind me and it takes off. That's exactly what it did right here. Curious to hear if you guys have had the same experience. Usually it would stutter and just stay there forever. <laughs> so hopefully Tesla's worked on that part because there were two major things that I noticed. Well, three with 1241. One is that it would struggle to, to get going when you turned it on. The second was the speed. And then the third was the lane selection. Lane selection is gonna require at least six to 12 drives to really understand if that's been improved. You can't jump to conclusions on that. So be very careful as you're watching these first impressions videos, be very careful because a lot of people will say things incorrectly because they just they witness it for one time only. Like for example, with 1241, I thought merging onto highways had been solved. A lot of people saying that it's not single stack and that's why, but you know, the first couple times I tested it on 1241, it merged perfectly. The turn signal went on nice and early. It got into the lane. It didn't, I didn't feel like I, I was going to sideswipe a vehicle. And then it was maybe like my sixth or seventh time of testing it where then suddenly I almost had a collision and I was very disappointed. But that's when I realized that it, it hasn't been fixed. So I made a mistake saying it had been fixed when it really hadn't. So just take that into account when you see these videos getting posted, people saying, oh, this has been fixed. It's so much better, um, especially with lane selection. That takes quite a bit of testing to figure out how it's operating. We're waiting here. This is a relatively simple intersection. And the reason I say that is because we are protected by this traffic light. It's going to turn into a green arrow and then we're gonna go left, at least I think it's a green arrow. It could be just a straight green light. And in that case, we have the car in front of us turning left. So we should be able to go straight away. Now, thankfully it's only one car. I've had situations on 1241 where there were two cars turning left and my car waited. And it waited for them, it was a green light and I was going left, same as right here, but it waited for those cars to finish going left. And it's obvious as a driver that they're going left. But the software couldn't tell. Okay, there we go. As soon as that car turned, my car committed and started going through. So uh, previously I was doing a ride share and I'll link the video up top. That uh, scenario made it very uncomfortable for me because had someone been right behind me, they would have gotten impatient and most, most likely honked at me but thankfully no one was behind me, so I allowed it to kind of wait. I mean, safety is paramount, right? It's important to be very, very safe. Here it's straggling the lines, hesitating to get into the far left lane there, but it finally did. 
Uh, that's typical. That's always kind of been a situation. I'm, I'm hopeful that we don't have any interventions or any disengagements. Elon did mention that for the miles per intervention or MPI, it's going to be greatly improved with 12.4. And he said five to 10 times better. I have not seen that. I've, I've had probably about the same number of interventions and disengagements as I did with 12.36, to be completely honest with you. And as everybody starts getting this, I really want to hear from you as well. What is your general experience? Are you having the same number of interventions and or disengagements? Now, Elon doesn't call out disengagements, but I think they're kind of grouped into one category. And, and, and historically, I've labeled them as many, as well as many other content creators as a disengagement is you taking over. In other words, stepping on the brake, jerking the steering wheel, or disabling self-driving with the right drive stock. Whereas an intervention is just introducing some extra speed. It's not as invasive as the disengagements are. So here, looking forward, it's moving. I have not touched the wheel at all. And you get used to this, by the way. It's, it's a different experience. It's really, really nice and convenient when you don't have to touch the wheel. As soon as we pass over this light, this is where I'm gonna test the speed offset. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of a gap ahead of us. I debated here taking over to get all the way over, but there's a car that's gonna beat me. That way I'd be at front of the line. I wouldn't have to worry about other traffic holding me up so I could really test this offset setting. Going forward and let's see what happens here. So we are, you can see it's a 40 max setting right now. 36, 37, 38, 40. Okay, there it's gonna stop at 40. And you can see now there's a gap. The pers person in front of me is going a little bit faster. So here we go, I'm gonna test this out. 44, oh look, it's going up to 44, that's great. It seems they've fixed that. Let me go back down to 40. Slowly it's slowing back down and we have a red light coming up here. So I, I, I have to pause, I said they fixed it. So previously the speed offset would work half of the time, half the time it wouldn't. It was the most weirdest thing, I couldn't figure it out. And I, I, it seemed like the larger the offset, the, the, the more it would respond to you providing input. It was really bizarre. Like I said, I couldn't pinpoint exactly when, or when it was doing it and then why it was doing it. But let's just do a test here. I'm gonna bring it all the way down to, we'll see how responsive it is. I'm just gonna set it down to 27. It's gonna take off and immediately it's gonna lock in at 27. The guy behind me is gonna be pushing me and then instantly, right as soon as we reach 27, I'm gonna off, bump it up. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 27, there it is. Okay, now, here we go, bumping it up. Look at that, right away it responds. 51 max, it's going, gonna go all the way up to 51 because now it changes to a 45 mile per hour speed zone, great. Let's just see if it'll go further than this, 51. I'm gonna say, a lot of people here are going 50, 51. I'm gonna try to say, let's, get, let's see if we can go 55. It is not responding to 55. So I'm not entirely sure if it is responding. Here, 58, 59, still not responding. In fact, it's slowing down because we have to turn left here. So a little bit more testing required to confirm whether or not that speed control can be done with the scroll button. It seems promising. Again, that's one of those convenience factors. For me, at least, it's easier to use my hand on the steering wheel to, to basically increase the speed with that wheel versus stepping on the accelerator pedal. I, I, I like to avoid using my feet. It just feels like a better, different experience. So if, if I can avoid that, I definitely will. I will be live streaming on X for everybody my experience here with 1242. Coming through neighborhoods feels really natural, very smooth. I don't notice any improvements here. In fact, this is gonna be a pretty uneventful drive through the neighborhood. 
So with that said, I'm going to close it out. Thanks so much, guys, for checking out this first impressions video. Let me know what you thought down below. And if, if there are any other testers that are also evaluating this, I know that it's going to take a while, maybe a couple days before everybody starts getting this. But for especially those content creators that the early release group, if you see this video and, and you have a different experience or you've noticed something, definitely let me know in the comments. I'll be keeping an eye. Uh, for everybody that's seeing this on YouTube, in the future, if you want to see these videos quickly and uh, input on what's improved, what hasn't improved, you, you got to get on Twitter. You got to get on got get on X. My uh, tag on there is John BBC. I know I took my personal account and turned it into my Tech Geek Tesla account, but definitely follow me on there if you're not already. J O N B B C. A little known fact: BBC stands for B flat clarinet. I used to play a lot of clarinet back in the day, almost majored in music. Uh, so people think it's the British Broadcasting Corporation, but that is not true. It is a B flat clarinet. All right, thanks guys. I'll see you. I'll see you in the live stream.